When Hollywood portrays earthquakes in movies, it often depicts scenes of chaos, crumbling cities, and sheer panic. Take, for example, the 2015 blockbuster San Andreas, starring The Rock. While California's San Andreas Fault often receives the most attention, the real seismic threats across the U.S. are more widespread and, in some cases, even more dangerous. Cascadia Subduction Zone Stretching more than 680 miles offshore from Northern California to British Columbia, the Cascadia Subduction Zone is one of the most powerful and ominous geological features in North America. Unlike the lateral movement seen along the San Andreas Fault, Cascadia is a subduction zone where one tectonic plate dives beneath another. This type of boundary is responsible for some of the most devastating earthquakes in history, including the 2004 Sumatra quake and tsunami. Marine geologist Chris Goldfinger of Oregon State University warns that Cascadia is capable of producing magnitude 9 earthquakes 30 times stronger than the worst-case scenario for San Andreas. The last time the full length of Cascadia ruptured was in 1700, producing an estimated magnitude 9 earthquake that generated a tsunami so massive it struck the coast of Japan. Goldfinger's research, which examines undersea landslides and sediment deposits, shows that while massive quakes like that one average every 530 years, smaller magnitude 8 events have occurred more frequently. This brings the average return interval closer to 270 years, making the region, by that math, overdue. It's now been 308 years since the last full rupture, leading scientists to calculate a 75% chance of a magnitude 8 or greater quake in the next 50 years. The implications for the Pacific Northwest are staggering. Cities like Seattle, Portland, and even Vancouver lie within the potential danger zone. Experts predict that a full rupture of Cascadia could cause shaking that lasts up to four minutes, collapse countless unreinforced masonry buildings, and create landslides and fires across the region. Worse still, a massive tsunami would likely follow within minutes, drowning low-lying coastal communities before most could escape. Goldfinger notes that cities like Portland have done little to retrofit vulnerable infrastructure, stating bluntly, the retrofitting has barely begun. Despite the apocalyptic tone, the silence of Cascadia is its most unnerving feature. While California residents feel tremors regularly and remain vigilant, the Pacific Northwest has had no such reminders in recent memory. New Madrid Seismic Zone Unlike the well-known faults of the West Coast, the New Madrid Seismic Zone sits quietly near the center of the country beneath Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois. Despite its relatively anonymous location, far from any plate boundaries, it's produced some of the most powerful earthquakes in American history. Between 1811 and 1812, a series of three massive quakes struck the region, the largest exceeding magnitude 8. These events caused the ground to rise and fall, opened fissures in the earth, reversed the flow of the Mississippi River, and were felt as far away as Boston and Washington, D.C. Geologist Eugene Schweig of the U.S. Geological Survey has spent decades studying New Madrid and calls it, quote, a big mystery. The region's seismic behavior doesn't follow traditional tectonic rules since it's located in the middle of a tectonic plate. Despite this, the area has a troubling track record. Schweig and other researchers estimate that major quakes have occurred here roughly every 500 years based on geological deposits such as sand blows ejected during intense shaking. Though that might sound like a long time, 200 years have already passed since the last catastrophe. The challenge is twofold. Not only are residents generally unaware of the threat, but the region is wholly unprepared. Cities within the region are filled with aging infrastructure, including countless buildings made from unreinforced brick. The USGS places the likelihood of another major earthquake in the New Madrid zone between 7 and 10 percent over the next 50 years. Wasatch Fault, Utah Running along the western edge of the Rocky Mountains in Utah is the Wasatch Fault, a 240-mile-long rupture zone responsible for the dramatic elevation of the Wasatch Range. This normal fault, where one side drops relative to the other, is capable of producing earthquakes as powerful as magnitude 7.5. The Wasatch Fault lies directly between Salt Lake City and its surrounding urban corridor, which includes over 1.6 million residents. Despite this, it hasn't experienced a major quake since the area was first settled by Mormon pioneers in 1847. Geologist Chris DuRoss of the Utah Geological Survey has studied the fault extensively. His findings show that major earthquakes occur roughly every 300 to 350 years on the central segments of the fault. It's been about 300 since the last one. 
Some of the most dangerous sections of the fault, including the ones directly under Salt Lake City and just to the north, have rupture intervals of 1,300 years, and both are at or near their average limits. Salt Lake City's seismic vulnerabilities go beyond the fault itself. The city sits atop an ancient lake bed composed of soft sediments that amplify seismic waves. This increases the likelihood of severe damage during a quake. A staggering 185,000 buildings in the Salt Lake Valley are classified as unreinforced masonry, structures that are especially likely to collapse in strong shaking. Alaska's Seismic Powerhouse Alaska holds the record for most powerful earthquake ever recorded in North America. In 1964, a magnitude 9.2 quake struck Prince William Sound, killing 128 people and triggering a tsunami that reached as far as California. That quake uplifted land by almost 40 feet in some areas and dropped it by over 7 feet in others. The tsunami waves soared to 220 feet locally and caused devastation across thousands of miles. The sheer magnitude of Alaska's seismic activity is unlike anything in the lower 48 states. This devastating event was caused by the same type of tectonic activity responsible for Cascadia, a subduction zone where the Pacific Plate is pushed under the North American Plate. According to geologist Peter Hausler of the USGS in Anchorage, these megathrust earthquakes typically occur every 350 to 900 years, but gaps in the geologic record mean there could be many smaller magnitude 8 quakes in between that we simply don't see. Aside from subduction-related quakes, Alaska has other active fault lines, including the infamous Denali Fault, which produced a magnitude 7.9 earthquake in 2004. The biggest concern isn't just the shaking, it's what follows. Much of Alaska's critical infrastructure passes through Anchorage, including air and ground transportation. The Anchorage Airport, for example, is built on soil susceptible to liquefaction, where the ground behaves like a liquid during intense shaking. A major quake could isolate the state by destroying key transportation routes. Hawaii's Hidden Hazard Known more for its volcanic activity than seismic threats, Hawaii has a history of devastating earthquakes that often go overlooked. In 1868, a magnitude 7.9 quake killed 77 people, most of whom died in the resulting tsunami. Earthquake seismologist Cecily Wolf from the University of Hawaii at Manoa explains that these quakes are a product of the very forces that built the islands. As magma pushes upward to form new land, it causes the crust to flex and bend, sometimes violently. The unpredictability of Hawaii's quakes makes them even more dangerous. Unlike faults on the mainland, with well-established geological histories, Hawaii's seismic past is hard to trace. The last major quake, a 7.2 in 1975, came 107 years after the one in 1868. Does this suggest a pattern? Scientists can't say for sure. Hawaii's Big Island sees the most activity, but it's not isolated. Quakes near Maui and other islands have occurred before, and older buildings are extremely vulnerable. Now it's time to hear from you. Do any of these hidden fault lines surprise you? Let us know in the comments section below.